ABC 30 to 40 continues here at home to stay on top of breaking news from Montgomery, where Governor Robert Bentley is now trying to stop the release of a potentially embarrassing report by attorney Jack Sharman. He is the special counsel to the House Judiciary Committee. He has been investigating the governor on behalf of the state legislature, which is considering impeachment. Bentley says the impeachment process is, quote, fundamentally unfair. He remains defiant and says he is not resigning. Once again, let me say, I do not plan to resign. I have done nothing illegal. If the people want to know if I misuse state resources, the answer is simply no. All I've ever tended to do was to work hard and help our people get good jobs, and be happy, and raise a family, and have a better life. During a visit to Birmingham today, reporters, though, ask for some straight answers about who accompanied the governor on the state plane and why. ABC 3340's political reporter Lauren Walsh is here. Lauren, Rebecca Mason resigned her position after a scandal with the governor, but her husband, John, remains in state government. Yes, Pam, John Mason is director of Serve Alabama, the governor's office of faith-based and volunteer service. The governor says John Mason, along with other members of his staff, were all in D.C. on official business. The inauguration of President Donald Trump attracted governors from across the nation. Governor Robert Bentley was one of them. He says the state plane also carried members of his staff to Washington. I had my legislative director, uh, uh, Wesley Helton. Uh, I had um, uh, Zach Lee, who is my liaison with uh, cities and counties. Uh, John Mason and his wife went with me, and then I had a special guest that went with me. John Mason's wife, Rebecca Caldwell Mason, was once Bentley's senior advisor. She resigned after the former head of the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency accused the governor of having an affair with her. Bentley has claimed there was no physical affair and no state resources were used illegally. However, the claims made by Spencer Collier sparked articles of impeachment from the Alabama House of Representatives. That investigation is currently suspended, while the Alabama Attorney General's office conducts its own probe. Now with the Masons on board a state aircraft, Bentley faces questions of why. He says John Mason is working with people in Washington about how to revitalize faith-based programs. And he's been on the phone with him. He's met with him on a number of occasions. So when he was there, he went and met with their counterparts there in Washington. This was a working trip. The governor is referring to his meeting with Republican governors about the future of the Affordable Care Act. He says during that meeting, John Mason worked with his federal counterparts. He is working with them because we're one of the only states right now that still have a faith-based program. A lot of them have disbanded their programs. As for why Rebecca Mason joined the trip, the governor says John Mason brought his wife, and the governor added he also brought a guest of his own as well. All right, Lauren, I know you also talked with the governor today about the budget, about funding for Medicaid, some other key issues leading into the legislative session that starts February 7th. What were your major takeaways? Pam, as expected, the governor plans to focus on passing his prison construction bill this session and with new pressures from the federal government to address the prison overcrowding and conditions. Now, as for naming a U new U.S. Senator when Jeff Sessions is confirmed as Attorney General, Bentley says he will name one of the 20 people he interviewed, and we can expect that as soon as Sessions is confirmed. We also talked about the $50,000 he loaned his campaign, Medicaid funding. I'll be airing more of our interview coming up on the news at 5 and 6. Just this afternoon, the Alabama Supreme Court ordering a stay to the temporary restraining order issued by a Montgomery judge, which means impeachment hearings against the governor will proceed on Monday. It is a black eye to our state. Uh, anytime such negativity, you know, I know many people make, are making fun of the situation, but it is a black eye. That was my money he spent. That was our money that he spent inappropriately. Let's end this embarrassment to our state right now. So I wouldn't want to be judged. It's easy to judge somebody else than to look within ourselves. And we begin with new developments in the possible impeachment of Governor Robert Bentley. Republican Senate President Pro Tem Del Marsh told ABC 3340 this afternoon he believes the governor should resign. House impeachment proceedings are set to begin Monday. ABC 3340's political reporter Lauren Walsh continues to break news on this story. And Lauren, Marsh's statement seems to be a warning shot to the governor. 
Wendell and Pam, when I spoke by phone with Senate President Pro Tem Del Mar, she told me he just does not see this situation getting any better, and he hopes Governor Robert Bentley will step down. The leader of the Alabama Senate says this is having a negative effect on getting legislation passed. And I asked him the last time he spoke with Governor Bentley, Marsh told me it's been weeks. He said the governor has basically, quote, checked out. And a number of citizens I spoke with told me they're also losing confidence in Bentley's leadership. Allison Altman voted for Governor Robert Bentley in both elections. I think that he should be impeached. Now she says it's time for new leadership. Like I said, I think he should be held accountable for all his actions. Um, kind of makes me, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> People in government should be held at the same standards as um, everyday citizens. Sherelle Urban is one voter who says what's unfolding now will change the way she approaches elections. I think I would look at more of a person's character versus campaign and politics and just what looks good on TV. The Ethics Commission found probable cause Bentley broke ethics and campaign finance laws and referred the matters to prosecutors. We know the Attorney General's office is already investigating. Former U.S. Attorney Doug Jones expects the Ethics Commission's decision to play a role. I think it'll move the timeline up. It will supplement what's going on in front of the grand jury and everything will be moved up some. And as a voter and citizen, Jones says something has to be done. It's just ridiculous. We have gone for over and over with a culture of corruption uh, in Montgomery. It still continues to this day despite all these ethics charges. Uh, Alabama has once again become a laughing stock between the Chief Justice, the Speaker of the House, the Governor of the State of Alabama. Literally just moments ago, the 100 plus page report was finally released. Well, Earlier this afternoon, Go Bentley's ahead. lawyers had been in court fighting for a temporary restraining order. The goal had been to try to halt the release of the general counsel's report to the House Impeachment Committee. That would have in turn delayed Monday's impeachment proceedings. ABC 3340's political reporter Lauren Walsh joins us right now. Lauren, I know all day we have been waiting for this report. It's been kind of in and out of courts and two different judges courts right. this afternoon, but there was new information that came out from the House today. There was, and the report literally just got it. You can feel it's still warm, just printed, got it minutes ago, so we're still going through it. We will have more details for you coming up, but while the House Impeachment Committee was waiting this afternoon for this report, Speaker of the House, Mac McCutcheon, called for Governor Bentley to resign. Let's end this embarrassment to our state right now. Let's quit harming the economic development of Alabama. Let's put the people first and let's let Alabamians once again look at our capital with pride rather than shame. If Governor Bentley will take a moment to consider the effect of his position and what it's having on our state, its reputation and its citizens, I am hopeful he will do the right thing and step down from office immediately. I got a text on my cell phone from the governor's spokesperson reiterating the governor has no plans of resigning. She said despite these calls for him to resign. Breaking news now, the just released impeachment report alleges Governor Bentley used state officers to cover up and even try to end his relationship with former top aide Rebecca Mason. Over the past hour, we have been trying to pour through 100 plus pages of this report that was compiled by special counsel Jack Sharman. It also says the governor refused to testify under oath and it says, quote, Governor Bentley's failure to cooperate with the committee's investigation is potentially an independent ground for his impeachment. Now it also outlines the relationship between Governor Bentley and his former senior advisor Rebecca Mason and how everything with his wife led to what became a public scandal. It says in particular quote Mrs. Bentley and her staff were denied all access to Governor Bentley's calendar by mid 2014 noting how far back this started. It says the staff frequently observed Mason to go into the Governor Bentley's office and shut the door where they would remain for long periods of time. At one point, his leader of security detail observed Mason leaving the governor's office. It says with tussled hair and making adjustments to her wardrobe. It notes that she was allowed to maintain her key card access to the Capitol when she was no longer a state employee. Now it says that his uh, 
different employees who used to work for the governor said that his relationship with Mason was taking center stage in his administration and he intended to suppress speculation and discussion about the relationship. It goes on to talk about her impact on his decision making, noting her role in state budget negotiations, and it also outlines how Mrs. Bentley made the now famous recordings of the governor speaking to Mason on the phone. It talked about how her former chief of staff, Heather Hanna, helped her make these recordings recordings. Uh, you'll remember that in the recordings he talks about how much he enjoys feeling Mason's breasts and their need to lock the door to his office when he was engaging in certain activities. It talks about threats that were made to Heather Hanna after those recordings became public and it also talks about the use of law enforcement as a tool. It says that the Chief Lewis who was head of his security detail tried twice to break off the relationship with Mason. It says that once he ordered Chief Lewis to travel to Tuscaloosa to attempt to convince the governor's son, Paul Bentley, to turn over those recordings. Mm -hmm. And it also talks about multiple ways that he says that law enforcement was used to try to cover up what was unfolding. Let me say to the people of this state how sorry I am to all of our people, to all of you. There's no doubt that I have let you down. In the last two hours, Bentley won one legal fight. A Montgomery judge granted his request for a temporary restraining order. The TRO blocks the impeachment process from moving forward Monday. However, that did not stop the committee's special counsel, Jack Sharman, from releasing his investigative report. ABC 3340's political reporter Lauren Walsh has been reading that report over the last two hours. And Lauren, what was in there? Jennifer and Brenda, you can see it's more than 120 pages long. Quite a few new details coming out. For one, it says Governor Bentley directed a state law enforcement officer to advance his personal interests. The report states the governor directed Chief Lewis to break off his relationship with former top aide Rebecca Mason. It says he ordered Lewis to travel to Tuscaloosa to attempt to convince Bentley's son to turn over the recordings his wife made at the beach. Those recordings help bring the scandal public, you'll remember. The report also outlines how Mrs. Bentley made the recordings with the help of her ch former chief of staff, Heather Hanna. And Hanna reports that the governor threatened her afterwards. And she also reported that after she testified before the State Ethics Commission, her car and her home were both vandalized. Within the last 20 minutes, the governor's attorney, Ross Garber, released this statement on the judge's ruling granting a temporary restraining order on those impeachment hearings. Quote, we appreciate the court's consideration of this serious case and are gratified by the result. The rule of law applies even to the legislature, even in impeachments. We will review today's document dump, which appears to be an amalgam of hearsay, rumor, and innuendo. I continue to have confidence that there will ultimately be fairness and due process in this matter. We interrupt this program for a special report from ABC 3340 News. This just into the ABC 3340 newsroom. The Associated Press is reporting Governor Robert Bentley will resign this afternoon. Let's tell you what we know right now. Of course, uh, the impeachment hearings that got underway this morning, those hearings have now been in recess since about 2.30. We also have been told that uh, Governor Bentley has been meeting with his staff. That was set for 2.30, and they are expecting to have a cabinet meeting at 3.30 this afternoon. Now, the governor's attorneys have been meeting with the attorney general in the attorney general's office this morning and this afternoon. And now, again, Associated Press reporting that Governor Robert Bentley will resign at some point this afternoon. And we have live crews in Montgomery to bring you the very latest developments. We will cut in as needed to bring you the very latest information on the expected resignation of Governor Robert Bentley, expected to step down this afternoon. Hi, Dave. Right now we are standing in front of the Capitol steps here where the other day the governor came down and announced that he intended to fight this, that he did not intend to resign. We now are hearing that at 5.05 this afternoon he will indeed submit the resignation. And then at 6 o'clock 
Lieutenant Governor Kay Ivey will be sworn in as Alabama's governor. As you mentioned just a moment ago, we have confirmed that the governor is at the Montgomery County Jail at this point. We understand that the negotiations are such that he has now agreed to a lesser charge, a misdemeanor. Again, remembering that he was charged or had probable cause for four different felony counts. So part of the negotiation today was to get that down to a misdemeanor, which would mean no jail time most likely and instead would mean a fine and restitution. This is supposed to all happen. We have all been waiting here. There's probably 100 members of the media right here now. We have been waiting here since 3.15. Our initial call was that it was going to be at 3.30. That has not yet happened. But a man who has stood by his promise to be with us today, Secretary of State John Merrill is here. You and I talked just a moment ago. This is a sad day for our state, a first also. Pam, it's a very sad day for Alabama. Anytime Alabama is introduced to the nation in a negative light, it's always a sad day for our state and for our people. Are you surprised that the governor, you worked with him carefully, are you surprised that the governor allowed it to go this far? Well, not only have I worked with the governor in my official and formal capacities as a member of the Alabama legislature and now as Alabama's 53rd Secretary of State, but the governor's a friend of mine. And this is a very difficult time for him and for his family and for all those people who have supported him. You know, to ask whether or not it's surprising that he's chosen this particular route is difficult to say because none of us really know how we'll respond until we're in a particular situation where certain choices are given to us. Mr. Secretary, you had a conversation with the governor. You informed him that, in your opinion, he had violated an ethics violation. Are you at liberty to share with us? I know he disagreed with you. Are you at liberty to share with us any other information he gave you at that time? Well, we were trying to assist the governor, as we do people that call and ask for our assistance at every day, sure. whether it's with a Fair Campaign Practice Act or whether it's with election-related issues, whatever it happens to be. In this instance, the governor had some questions about the way that certain things need to be reported or what should be reported. Uh, we introduced to him some information that he did not view the same way that we did. And, of course, our interpretation was strictly the way that the code and the Constitution say that the standards should be met. And, of course, the governor chose to go the route that he felt was the most appropriate at the time. Well, you mentioned a moment ago that you are friends with not only the governor but with his family. Have you been able to speak with any of his sons or, or with his ex-wife through any of this? No, not in a long time. And one of the things that's so difficult about a situation like this is because it's so personal and because there's so many things that are relative strictly to that family, I think there's a level of respect that needs to be adhered to. I think there's an appropriate distance that needs to be shared. As If we still have the picture up from the Montgomery County Jail, that is where we believe that the, the governor either is or has just left. And that is, of course, where we have Lauren Walsh, our political reporter who has been there, staking that out this afternoon because we do know that even though he is now going to plead to a misdemeanor, he still would have to turn himself in and go through the processing of that. Representative Henry joins me right now. First of all, what are you hearing at this point? We are hearing resignation at 5.05. Correct. Uh, sometime right after five, the last word I, I just received was that Governor Bentley is, is at the Montgomery County Courthouse in front of Judge Poole being uh, booked on misdemeanor charges. And that, that was so critically important to the negotiations that the four probable causes for felonies were downgraded to a misdemeanor. That's right. I think that was part of the deal is, is if you you will step down, we'll downgrade those, you'll still be able to practice medicine and, uh, and you know, move on with his life. If, if, as soon as Governor Bentley resigns from office, the articles of impeachment that I filed a year ago will be uh, moot. Are you surprised that it took this long? Are you surprised that the governor allowed it to go this long? I'm disappointed that it lasted this long. There's no reason that it should have taken over a, over year, a year to deal with this. And and really all that year did was, was cause us more pain, anguish, and heartache as, as the state uh, not to mention it put it put us, uh, you know, even our U.S. Senate appointment of Luther Strange has question and concern about a little what, tainted. it's tainted. And, and had we dealt with this when we first knew we had a problem, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be in that boat, in that position either. So it's disappointing, but at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm happy today that we finally have, have turned the corner. You have a resolution. And we, and we, we do. We have resolution mm -hmm. to the entire problem, mm -hmm. and we can start to restore from a government perspective the trust that the people put in us to, to send us here. 
We are now being told to move to the old house chamber in 15 minutes. So that is where we're headed, folks. We will see you again in about 15 minutes time. And, and as we heard from Ed Henry, uh, the governor was booked on misdemeanor charges this afternoon. This is the governor's mugshot wow. that we have just received. And you, I imagine he had to be fingerprinted and right. booked just like anyone else who has a misdemeanor charge against them. Okay, guys, since we last talked outside the Capitol steps, we have now moved into the old house chamber inside the Capitol. If uh, my photographer, Bill Castle, can pan over here, you will see that the governor's staff has been assembled, his cabinet has been assembled, and they are there. We are informed that obviously the governor is coming in here in just a few moments to make the announcement that all of us have been talking about, and that is that he is indeed resigning as the governor of the state of Alabama. That is where we stand right now. It was a mad dash to get everybody inside here. We climbed up a couple of flights of stairs, and we're now ready. They had told us this would begin in 15 minutes. That was probably about seven minutes ago. So we are now just awaiting the governor, who we anticipate will walk through those doors and will come in and he has already apparently addressed his cabinet and he will now address the people of the state of Alabama. And again, we will be here, we will carry it live to you. Stand by, we will bring you that just as soon as the governor enters the room. I just talked with a couple of members of his cabinet here and they informed me that he talked with them this afternoon about 3.45. Uh, we were not privy obviously to what he said to them, but we are now just all in here waiting for the governor to come in and make the announcement that so many within his own party had said he needed to do long before now. If you, if you remember last week, uh, both the, the Senate pro tem and the Speaker of the House said that he should go ahead and resign for the good of the state. Over the weekend, the Alabama GOP steering committee came out and said, Governor, you need to resign now. And again, the big sticking point today was that it had to, he had to make sure that it could simply be negotiated down from the possibility of four felonies, which would have involved anywhere from two to 20 years for each felony, plus as much as a $10,000 fine down to a misdemeanor. We have also now just heard that he will not resign until right at 5 o'clock and with the swearing in of Kay Ivey to take place at 6. We're here, we're waiting, Wendell, but that's all we know right now as to what is happening here. But this indeed is a first for the state of Alabama. I've covered governors in this state all the way back to George Wallace, and I've never seen anything like this. And, and right our now, shot here is mm -hmm. just outside the courtroom. And we are going to keep an eye on this scene. We understand the governor is uh, before judge right now, uh, finalizing all of this. We were in Governor Bentley, just left the courtroom here at the Montgomery County Courthouse. He pled guilty to two campaign finance charges. One was failing to file a major campaign contribution. The second was knowingly converting campaign contributions to personal use. For each of those charges, the governor asked him if he was pleading guilty, and he did say he was. He entered the courtroom, obviously not looking happy. When he left it, I noticed he was with his head down. He had his um, attorney, Bill Athanos, with him. And when we entered the courtroom initially, we did see Matt Hart, who many know as the prosecutor at the Attorney General's office in the Special Prosecutions Unit, who um, led to the conviction of former Speaker of the House, Mike Hubbard. But when Governor Bentley was pleading guilty to these two campaign finance charges, he was um, given 12 months of supervised probation, but the judge said that that might end early if he meets all the requirements of his plea agreement. He has 100 hours of community service as a licensed physician here in Alabama. He also um, is supposed to give back 36,000 of his campaign funds within one week from today. That was part of the deal that the governor asked him, or that the judge asked him to do. And again, if he meets all of the requirements to the plea agreement early, he could end that 12 months of supervised probation early. But again, breaking news, Governor Robert Bentley was just in the courtroom here at the Montgomery County Courthouse. He did, uh, we did learn that he has officially resigned from the position of governor of Alabama. And he entered the, he left the courtroom um, with the back entrance. We, now let's go back. I believe we have the district attorney in Montgomery County. Today concludes the investigation of matters involving former Governor Robert Bentley. I feel that it was extremely important to resolve it as quickly as possible, and I believe we've accomplished that. There will be those who ask uh, why misdemeanors when the Ethics Commission referred to us felonies. The Ethics 
Commission looks at probable cause. In a criminal trial, you look at beyond a reasonable doubt. But most important, the law of Alabama supports these guilty pleas. The misdemeanor punishments were most appropriate for these offenses. And it became clear to me that the people of the state of Alabama deserved an end to this. I think this judge was being fair considering the fact that Bentley was 74 years old. He has lost his job. He has lost his church. He has lost his family. Don't take that to say that I, I feel sorry for him. He did what he did, and he deserves to be now called a criminal. Part of our agreement was that he must immediately resign. Part of our agreement was to pay back as much as he could to the state. And by getting back those campaign funds, we've ensured he can't misspend them anymore. Another important factor that you may not realize is that he gave up his retirement benefits. Based on a life expectancy chart, we believe we had saved the state of Alabama over $1 million that he could have been paid on a monthly basis as part of his retirement. In addition to that, he has given up his rights to ask for security, which will save us an untold amount of money. So what we've done today is to put an end to this administration. I think it states to all of us, no one is above the law, even the governor. It states to us, you must do what is right. When you take money from people for campaigns, you should spend it wisely and under the law, and not for some other person to help her out. So. Good afternoon. You know, I've lived in, uh, in this great state of Alabama now for my entire life. Uh, I grew up here. I went to college here. I raised a family here. I practiced medicine in Tuscaloosa for 35 years. And in 2010, I received the greatest honor of my life when the people of our great state elected me and chose me and humbly asked me to serve as their governor. I've always believed the honor of serving as your governor was a calling that God placed on my life. I've not always made the right choices. I've not always said the right things. Though I have sometimes failed, I've always tried to live up to the high expectations the people place on the person who holds this esteemed office. Though I have committed myself to working to improve the lives of the people of our state, there have been times that I have let you and our people down, and I'm sorry for that. The consequences of my mistakes have been grievously unfair to you, my loyal and dedicated staff, and my cabinet, and all of our agencies who have continued your exemplary service to our people in your respective agencies in the face of difficult circumstances. I can no longer allow my family, my dear friends, my dedicated staff and cabinet to be subjected to the consequences that my past actions have brought upon them. I have spent the last year in deep and earnest prayer over our state and our people. I pray every morning for wisdom and guidance and forgiveness for the sins that I commit. And this Easter week, I'm even more grateful for a loving and merciful Savior who will always love me and you unconditionally. The governor is the face of the state in Alabama. 
in virtually all areas, even on a national stage. And I want you to know I love our people with all of my heart, and I want nothing more than to serve them, whether in natural disasters, whether in helping four-year-olds qualify for a great pre-K program that we have here, or to just help create jobs and help them feed their families. But the time has come for me to look at new ways to serve the good people of our great state. I have decided it is time for me to step down as Alabama's governor. I'm leaving this office that I have held, that I have respected, that I've loved for seven years to focus on other and possibly more effective areas of service. I love our people in this state. I love this office. However, I realize there are things more important than a political office. I have spoken with Lieutenant Governor Ivey, and we have agreed that the people of our state need and deserve a positive and peaceful transition of power. I will be leaving the office today, April the 10th. But my administration will work with Lieutenant Governor Ivey's administration to provide any assistance needed to make a smooth transition and have minimal disruption on our state. I am forever filled with the gratitude of the honor that has been placed on me by the people of this state to serve as your governor. Especially, I give thanks to God for such a wonderful gift that he gave me when he allowed me to be the governor of Alabama. A special gift to the wonderful, loyal, and very talented staff and cabinet and agencies who truly are the backbone of our state government. And I am forever grateful for the service each and every one of you has given to me and the sacrifices that you have made, and most of all, the dedication that you have shown to making Alabama a great state. Together we've accomplished some amazing things, and I know great things are still ahead for our state. So again, let me thank you for your service, and I want to thank you for being your governor. And I also want to thank particularly all of the people across this state who every day send me texts, send me emails, tell me how much they love me, tell me how much they still care for me, and tell me that they are praying for me. So please continue to do that, and I will continue to pray for you. So thank you, and goodbye. And I love this state from the bottom of my heart and the people who live here. God bless you. You just heard Governor, former Governor Robert Bentley talking about this. Pam, Let's you go just on. heard yeah, it. Yeah, Pam, you're joining in with us now. You just, uh, you just witnessed this piece of history. What are your thoughts? Uh, I believe you threw it to me. I'm sorry, I can barely hear you. Uh, very humble, uh, Governor, but again, if you noticed, he never said the word that he had resigned. He never talked about other than the fact that he had made some issues he never really came out and said that was what hit me i am resigning because i was wrong he said that he had done some some things that were not good and that he had uh, perhaps disappointed the people of alabama but he never came out and said i did this wrong again of course that changed just a few moments before that when he was in a courtroom and admitted to two misdemeanors and pleaded guilty to that plea deal and you were telling me you hope this sends a message to all public officials saying that nobody is above the law absolutely if you can prosecute the governor the highest ranking state official that means anybody is going to be investigated and prosecuted by an excellent uh, 
special uh, investigative unit at the Attorney General's office. So said something you said he deserves to be called a criminal. Tell me what you mean by that. Well, one would like to think that people just make mistakes, but in this case, uh, in the two counts to which the governor, former governor pled guilty, uh, he clearly knew and intended to do what he was doing, meaning uh, he would write a check on his own campaign account, sign it, and then give it knowing it was going for someone not a state employee uh, outs outside of uh, state business uh, and to pay their legal expenses. That's knowing you're doing something. He didn't file a form sounds kind of minor, but it was about a $50,000 loan that he made to his campaign. There's no reason not to file it. So these are the kind of things that can catch up with you as you continue a pattern and practice of ignoring the law, meaning even the governor has to follow the law. We do know that Kay Ivey is in the House, and I believe she is walking in right now. <clears throat> That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Alabama. And the Constitution of the State of Alabama. So long as I continue. So long as I continue. A citizen thereof. A citizen thereof. And that I will faithfully and honestly. And that I will faithfully and honestly. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office upon which I'm about to enter of the office upon which I am about to enter. Governor of the state of Alabama. Governor of the state of Alabama. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you so very much for being here today. Today, is both a dark day in Alabama, but yet also it's one of opportunity. I ask for your help and your patience as together we steady the ship of state and improve Alabama's image. These are my first priorities as your governor of the 54th governor of the state of Alabama. When I took office in 2011 and again in 2015, I was prepared for this day but never desired it and certainly never expected it would come. The people of Alabama can be sure that there will be no disruption in the ongoing of the functions of the state of Alabama. I will soon meet with the leaders of the Alabama legislature with the director of finance, with cabinet members, with the constitutional officers to ensure that there'll be a smooth changeover. Despite the challenges that the state and we face today, today's transition should really be viewed as a positive opportunity. It is a demonstration of our successful practice of the rule of law and the principles of democracy. Serving as your governor and representing the great state of Alabama is no small task. But I pledge to each of you that I will do my very best. The Ivy administration will be open, it will be transparent, and it will be honest. Kay Ivey, now officially the governor of the state of Alabama, the 54th governor of the state of Alabama. 
that that was the key line. That's what brought people back to their feet, and that's what brought the applause here in this room tonight. Open, honest, transparent administration. Now, Representative Farley, a Republican from McCullough, is actually on the House Judiciary Committee, which was considering the articles of impeachment, and he was also just in the chamber as Kay Ivey gave her remarks. Let me first ask you, what is your reaction after leaving the chamber and hearing Ivey's remarks? I'll repeat the new governor. She said this is uh, both a dark day and a day for opportunity, and uh, I couldn't say it better. It has been a historic day, one that I am glad that I was able to report on, but one that uh, I would agree with most everyone else here. We wish it had not happened in our state in quite this way. But we are all moving forward as Alabamians. We are all saying that this is still the great state of Alabama, and we will see what happens in the future. For the second time in Alabama's modern history, a sitting governor has been forced out of office. It all began this afternoon when former Governor Robert Bentley took the podium for the last time as Alabama Alabama's top politician. Former Governor Robert Bentley's resignation came less than an hour after he pleaded guilty to two misdemeanor charges. Bentley pleaded guilty to one count of failing to file a contribution report and one count of knowingly converting campaign contributions to personal use. The former governor must also surrender more than $36,000 in remaining campaign funds, serve 100 hours of community service as a physician, and repay Rebecca Caldwell Mason's legal fees. Now, shortly after his resignation, Bentley's Twitter handle also changed. The former governor tweeted the following. I am forever filled with gratitude for the honor the people have given me and the opportunity I have had to be their governor. We continue our team coverage tonight with the question on everyone's mind. What's next for the state of Alabama? ABC 3340's Andrew Donnelly is live in Montgomery. And Andrew, you've been working to answer that question for our viewers. And you've learned lawmakers are now hopeful for change. Well, guys, I think the answer everyone wants to hear tonight is change, but only time will tell if the new governor can give that to us. This is both a dark day in Alabama and an opportunity for Alabama. Representative Alan Farley quoting newly sworn in Governor Kay Ivey Monday shortly after she took office. She takes over the reins of government after former Governor Robert Bentley had an emergency hearing to execute his plea deal with the state. One of the people who brokered that deal, Special Assistant Attorney General Eleanor Brooks. It's embarrassing. It's not representative of who the people of Alabama are. Uh, we deserve better. The legislature has spent an incredible amount of time and energy on this issue when they could have been working on other important issues. Farley says one of those people is Governor Kay Ivey. We're going to give Governor Kay Ivey every benefit of every doubt. Uh, we're going to hope that she just cuts loose with abandon uh, and, and she cleans house. She keeps those that, uh, that, that she feels can do the best job. And if there's some that have been around Governor Bentley that she feels that she could replace them with somebody better, uh, then that's her job to do it. Until then, people will remember this historic day. It is a dark day. Uh, this, this is just a continuation of uh, bad things that have happened in Alabama politics over the last several years. And guys, you know, we could see that change. Governor Ivey says during her time, she wants honesty and transparency to be key in her administration. Live in Montgomery, Andrew Donnelly, ABC 3340 News. What transpired in Montgomery's capital earlier this evening was historic. And a one governor resigned, a new governor took the oath of office. Both asked God to help them as they begin different paths. Now, ABC 3340's Pam Hoff has covered politics in Alabama, going back to Governor George Wallace. And she spent this day at the state house and the capitol reporting as these events unfolded rather quickly. And Pam joins us now with her perspective on what you saw happen today and let's start with the the governor's speech mm -hmm. was what he said appropriate I think it's important that we know of course that the governor had already officially resigned before he ever, ever entered the old house chamber this afternoon but again he was going to speak to the media at that time and to the citizens of the state of Alabama this was his opportunity now going back a whole year in time the governor had said the people hadn't heard his story well they still haven't his resignation speech was couched in terms that said he had disappointed people in the state, but he never fully said what he did or that what he did was wrong and that that is why he had to resign. 
He said he had sometimes let the people down. He had not always made the right choices. He tried to make it sound as if he and, and now Governor Ivey had just decided it was time he did something else. He did appear to be quite humbled physically, but not quite as transparent as some had expected him to be. So Pam, compare that to uh, Governor Kay Ivey's speech in the old Senate chamber. She walked into the Senate chamber very strong. She also walked out extremely strong this evening. She took the oath of office and at the end of it, she was really quite passionate in making a point of emphasis and saying, so help me God. And then her speech to the people was extremely straightforward. But she said what people wanted to hear, I think, tonight. She said, today is a dark day in Alabama, but also one of opportunity. Together we steady the ship of state and improve the image of the state. These are my two priorities as governor. And then, guys, she said, her administration will be open, transparent, and honest. And that brought people to their feet. All right. Well, we, uh, we will, uh, of course, uh, the people of Alabama, I'm sure, will coalesce behind her. And we'll see what happens from here. Pam. All right. We appreciate it. Yeah.